Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vin PF, and on today's episode, we're going to be heading to something that's on the cheaper end of the spectrum, something that I'll probably call a guard whiskey later on, which you'll know if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, is a uh, thing I like to call whiskies that you put in front of other whiskies to protect them from yourself or other people looking to rummage around your collection, whatnot. This one here is the Black Bottle, and it's a brand that um, has been around since the 1800s, 1879, as it says quite largely on the bottle over here. But as uh, this thing is kind of like a relaunch, I think it was like 2013, they brought out the, uh, the Black Bottle range again, and by they I mean Gordon Graham's. And they've uh, got a few different uh, kind of whiskies in their little range, but uh, this is the standard release. Now this one sells for, uh, at most 25 quid but at least something like 18 pounds so yeah it really is on the cheaper spectrum of things obviously we have a blended whiskey here there's a mixture of malt whiskies and grain whiskey so you know you have to blend this isn't a single malt they say it's largely isla based uh, and then has some other stuff thrown in as well so we're going to be expecting something a little bit smoky it's 40% i can imagine it's added color and chill filtered but you know if the price is good we're not going to be worried too much about that. Uh, the other thing that they go on about on their website, there's lots of kind of marketing stuff. You know, you, we select the finest malts, all that sort of stuff. You know, we gloss over that and we move on. Uh, but they do talk about double maturation, although in this case, it's going to be kind of the main term of maturation in whatever cask. They don't sort of talk about those casks, but at a, a, a reasonable guess, we're going to be talking about some kind of refill, you know, second, third, fourth, whatever. Uh, and then it's finished for a term of, they say, six to nine months in uh, virgin oak, new oak casks. So, uh, yeah, they make a big deal of talking about the double maturation and the virgin oak, but not the original cask beforehand, which, again, we can make some, we can make some assumptions about that based on the uh, price of the whiskey. You know, uh, whiskey becomes cheaper when the barrel doesn't really owe you much anymore. You know, if it's been round the rafters for a couple of decades or whatnot, then uh, you know the, the whiskey is a little bit cheaper because you haven't got a factor that kind of cast cost in there. Uh, they also talk about um, kind of charring. You know, charring is very typical anyway, but they go on about their kind of level four charring, which is quite high on the charring scale. So yeah, we're, we're expecting something a little bit smoky, whatnot. But let's get into the actual whiskey and see what we've got. You know, um, we don't know about added color. We're just making guess on here, but you know, it's got a nice a kind of typical whiskey color. This is what the, this is the kind of color that most whiskies that add color are going to be aiming towards you know what the the the, the non-enthusiast would kind of think whiskey looks like i digress let's get onto the nose and see what we've got there's nothing unusual on this um i have to say considering they talk about the char and isla a lot i'm not getting a whole load of smoke off of this it is there it's very light in the background Quite a lot of kind of multi flavors that I would uh, normally associate with kind of youth of a, of a whiskey. This isn't a negative, by the way. Just you know, giving you what I smell. Lots of vanillas and lots of oak. Actually, it's uh, quite tannic, kind of leathery, tobaccoy notes that I imagine have come from the first the first virgin oak. I was going to say first fill them, but let's say virgin oak, new oak, new oak. You can you can usually tell I, I stumble when I'm saying virgin. I don't really like saying virgin oak. I prefer to say new oak, but you know. We're going by the terms that the industry uses. Let's try on the palette then. Hmm. Okay, it's initially quite thin, as you might expect from the kind of 40% vibes. There's a gentle waft of smoke through it. it. Isn't like overly deep or flavorful. Lots more of those kind of vanillas and, and multi notes. It's one of those whiskies that translates nicely from the nose to the palate. There is a little bit more smoke on the palate than there is on the nose, but not much. We're talking just a waft of, of smokiness. It isn't kind of like earthy peatiness. And it finishes quite large peppery notes. It's quite spicy, uh, you know, those kind of spicy tingly elements rather than the juicy fruitiness. Finish is kind of short to medium, quite drying, um, not much smoke there either. And um, ends on like a rather soury note, I have to say. But yeah, uh, I have to. Say, it's not not a bad whiskey by any stretch. Uh, any of those notes I gave there weren't really negatives. They were just what I get. It fits its price point very well, especially when you can get it on the cheaper end. You know, if you can get this for the eighteen pounds, twenty pounds mark, twenty five pounds is pushing it a little bit. You know, there are good whiskies out there for twenty five pounds, and this is one of those. You know, it's 
it's an okay whiskey. It's all right. It, you know, if you're paying any more than that, don't bother. You know, you can get way better whiskies for more than 25 quid. But this fits the bill of what I mentioned earlier, that kind of guard whiskey, you know, those, if, you, if you're like me and, um, you know, you, you tend to have a dram of whiskey most evenings, uh, but there's some evenings where you just don't fancy tapping into the good stuff or whatever, you're getting low. This is the kind of perfect thing for that, you know. Also, if you're kind of sessioning with some friends, let's say, um, this would be a kind of perfect one to ease people into that kind of smokiness. Um, trying to find things that, you know, the reasons why you would purchase this as a, 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 a kind of whiskey enthusiast, let's say, if you've got some really good stuff on your shelf. This one you can put in front of it and, and not worry too much about it. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. And as a final thought, because it's called Black Bottle, and it is a black bottle, and you know if you watch this show, I really hate bottles where you can't see through it to see how much whiskey you've got in there. And it is difficult to see, you know, you can't see, you can see the reflection there. You can't see through this unless you hold it up to the light, and then you can just about see the light through it. Um, I'm sort of sitting around here, but it does take a bit of effort. But, you know, it's cheap enough to not have to worry about it. If you pour it out and it happens to be the last dram, no harm, no foul, get another bottle or don't entirely up to you.